Hi, my name is Matthew Bellinger. I'm a graduate student at the University of Minnesota, advised by Dr. Aaron Cordes and Dr. Melissa Wilson. And my poster presentation is on assessing the implications of chloride from land application of manure for Minnesota waterways. I'd like to start by thanking my other co-authors, Dr. Gary Feireisen and Nancy Borman. Chloride contamination is a rising concern in Minnesota ground and surface waters. Uh, in a recent synthesis of chloride loading in the state, um, livestock waste applied as fertilizer uh, has been estimated to be about 6% of the chloride load uh, through leaching. However, there is not a lot of up-to-date data that supports this, as a lot of this data came from a study done in 2004, and also did not assess how chloride moves through different soil types. So in order to make a more accurate chloride mass balance, uh, research needs to be done to understand the variability in chloride by manure type, uh, that is liquid manure versus solid manure, uh, variability in livestock species, and how manure-based chloride moves through different uh, textured soil profiles. So the objective of my research is to quantify the movement of manure-based chloride through various Minnesota soil types through a series of intact core leaching studies. Um, I aim to study medium textured from Rosemount, Minnesota, and fine textured soil from Wasika, Minnesota. Um, we would like to compare variation in chloride leaching through different Minnesota soil types, compare how chloride leaching uh, from manure varies from synthetic KCL fertilizer, which is commonly used by producers, and then compare how chloride leaching differs between liquid and solid manures. So in order to complete the study, we collected 12 inch in depth by 12 inch in diameter soil cores from Rosemont, Minnesota and Wasika, Minnesota. Uh, soy, soybean fields, and then we brought the soil cores to field capacity in the lab with water prior to surface applying any manure treatment or the KCL fertilizer. Once we did that, we surface applied manure on a uh, nitrogen-based application rate while we applied KCL fertilizer on a K-based application rate. And then afterwards, we simulated three two-inch rainfall events and collected leachate samples for chloride analysis following each event. Um, when we collected soil cores from the field, we collected initial soil plugs uh, as a baseline nutrient analysis. And then following the three wetting events, we collected um, soil plugs from each individual core uh, for a post-experiment chloride nutrient analysis. And then all soil plugs were at a depth of zero to six inches and then six to 12 inches to see how chloride moves through the soil profile. And then as you see here in this picture in the bottom, on the left, we see medium textured soil. On the right, we see the fine textured soils. Uh, this is a nice visual just to show the variability in like how the soil looks um, and how you can see there is more leaching in the fine textured soils in the right. So as this is an ongoing experiment, I have just finished the first set of replicates. Um, I don't have any leachate data back yet um, as I'm just kind of sending them in, in waves, but I was able to acquire some soil data that I can present. Um, and this soil data is a nice visualization to see how the change in soil chloride storage following leaching events. So on each of these graphs, on the y-axis, you have delta chloride for each treatment in grams, while on the x-axis, we have treatment of solid, liquid, KCL, and control at each depth with 0 to 6 being blue and 6 to 12 being orange. So just from visualizing these graphs, we can see the medium textured soils had a far greater change in chloride storage compared to the fine textured soils in both the top and bottom layers. Um, it was almost magnitudes higher of chloride storage, especially in the top layer. Um, we see in the solid and liquid manure treatment in, in both textured soils, the chloride storage uh, increased, especially in the top layer. Uh, and while it did in the fine textured soil, it's just not to the same degree. And then we see the KCL addition increase chloride storage in medium soils more drastically than fine soils. And then we also see that control soils both experienced a loss in chloride following rain events. So there's actually less chloride in each layer uh, following the leaching events. So what would we like to do in the future? So in the future, we would like to, um, one, get the leachate data back and see how chloride uh, moved through the soil profile if this chloride that was stored in the soil eventually flows out after towards the end of the experiment. And then we will compare the leaching by soil treatment 
um, following the leachate analysis. And then we would like to, once we have all the data, create a chloride mass balance as seen on the right, mapping the chloride inputs of the total hydrologic chloride input and the manure chloride input um, and the outputs seen in the total chloride leaching output um, to see how chloride moves through the system where we can uh, calculate the delta chloride, chloride storage in each layer respectively. Um, we will then connect, conduct another set of leaching studies with different Minnesota soils and different manures in the future, possibly in the following year. Thank you for listening to my poster talk. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge that this work is supported by the University of Minnesota Water Resources Center's Watershed Innovation Grants Program, short for WINS. Thank you to Scott Cordes, Thorselli, Eddie Alto, and Tom, Todd Shoemaker for the field help collecting the soil cores. They were very heavy and I appreciate your help. And then thank you to the staff at the Southern Research and Outdoor Outreach Center and the Rosemount Research and Outreach Center for field access. Thank you again for listening to my talk.